Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Sister Wives with Mary Jane Kay. Today, I'll be giving my commentary on Seeking Sister Wife, Season 4, Episode 6, A Distant Dream. The episode opens with the Foley's of Texas when Steve announces the news to his kids that he and Brenda are looking for a second sister wife. His daughter, Jaden, asks Steve, is that not uncomfortable if your parents, when you're like 16, came to you and said, hey, I'm going to get another girlfriend. It's like an uncomfortable situation, she says, to be in this weird situation for your parents to date multiple people. Steve is angry and frustrated at Jaden's reaction. She isn't going to visit her dad if he gets another girlfriend. She suggests her dad can choose between her or his new girlfriend. Jaden tells her dad he's free to do what makes him happy, but she won't be visiting him. Steve doesn't know what to say to her. He says the thought of having to choose between his daughter or bringing a new girlfriend into the family, it's not a fair thing to ask of him. It makes Steve question if he's doing the right thing, if it's best for his family. Steve can't understand where all of this came from. Steve asks Jaden what her concern is, and Jaden says her concern is she thinks it's gross. Steve's son interjects that they should go into this with an open mind. He doesn't agree with the lifestyle either, but he isn't completely writing it off. Jaden says to her, all it sounds like is that her dad, Steve, doesn't love his wife enough, so he needs to expand his love. Steve insists that's not it at all. It's about expanding everything around. Brenda says it was hard to be there and she wishes she could have said something to ease Jaden's mind, but she knew there's nothing you can say to a teenager who has a mind going one way. Brenda didn't want to ignite things further, so she stepped back and she allowed Steve to figure out a resolution. Jaden says Steve can do this if he wants to, and they can never talk about it again. Steve doesn't want them shunning each other. His response is, geez guys, seriously, nothing has changed. I'm still your dad. Jaden says her dad, his wife, and their really close friend. And Steve tells her, yeah, that's it. And he says that Jaden has her mind made up about who he is. And no matter how many times he tells her it's not true, or he asks Jaden if her view even makes sense, Jaden's mind is already made up and there is nothing he can do. Steve wants everyone to move forward. He asks that his kids keep an open mind and open communication. Steve asks Jaden if she still loves him as her father, and she gives him a silent thumbs up. Steve comments that's all he gets is a thumbs up, and Jaden nods her head yes in silence. Next up are the Joneses. Sidian made it to the Philippines. He's nervous to meet Ariel in person after so many failed trips due to COVID. He's worried Ariel could be a little different in person than she is online, and he worries maybe he will seem different for her as well. The purpose of the trip is to decide if Sidian is going to propose. Sidian says Ariel is the best potential sister wife they have ever come across, and it could have a huge impact on their family. Sidian and Ariel meet. Ariel is shaking with nerves, and Sidian's heart is pounding. Ariel says it feels amazing meeting Sidian for the first time. She can't explain the feeling. She says it feels natural with Sidian, and she's attracted to him. She likes how nerdy Sidian is and how tall. Sidian makes it easy for Ariel to have conversations because Ariel can tend to get awkward during conversations. So Sidian feels an instant connection to Ariel and that it's organic and natural and it's much better than what Sidian even expected. He says it's important that the trip goes well, not only for himself, but for Tasha and the family. And it's important for the future and the way they want to live their lifestyle. So a lot is riding on this. And if it doesn't work out, they have to go back to square one. Next up are the Merrifields. Eric and Danielle are packing up their camper so they can finally move into their house after five months of being in the camper. They have a lot going on and things are stressful. It's been a few months since they have been in LA. Leah didn't seem prepared to balance work and family life 
and she is very career driven, Danielle says. Their communication with Leah started to dwindle and Leah reached out and she wanted the relationship to end. They flash back on the show and they play the call with Leah and she says the relationship didn't feel as genuine as she was hoping for and she didn't feel she had enough options or choices in the relationship. It was their way or the highway. So she tells them it's best for them to all go their separate ways. Danielle asks Garrick how he feels about the way things ended with Leah. Garrick and Danielle both agree it just wasn't meant to be. Garrick says when the next right person comes along, they will just know. And Danielle suggests, yeah, like with Bert. Danielle wasn't fully on board and okay with Bert, and she didn't just know Bert was meant to be. Garrick pushed Danielle to get a legal divorce just to apply for the K-1 with Bert, who was still not even in the U.S. And Danielle didn't want the divorce. She sobbed all the way through it, doing it just for Garrick, basically. Danielle says they were about to stop looking, and there Bert was, and it came easy because God did it. Danielle says, Roberta knows things ended with Leah. Roberta was uncomfortable at the idea of Garrick and Danielle dating someone else while they were also dating her. Garrick says now that Leah isn't in the picture, he knows he needs to focus his time and attention on Roberta and getting her to the U.S. Garrick hopes after three years, Bert will be here shortly. Danielle asks if Garrick has heard from the lawyer and they are waiting on Roberta to email back about picking up her visa and passport. Roberta's visa has been approved, so that means she can come to the U.S. But Roberta has to schedule a time to pick up her visa and passport, and she still hasn't made that appointment. Roberta was supposed to pick them up last week, but she didn't. And Danielle and Garrick's immigration lawyer made it clear that Roberta can't wait till the last minute because flights are limited. So Roberta only has a short period of time to get to the U.S. Garrick says it can't be that hard. He and Danielle wonder how everything is just waiting. Danielle says Roberta got approved for her visa and now Roberta is waiting a couple of weeks delaying to pick up her visa and passport. Garrick says getting Roberta to the U.S. has been a long process. It's taken much longer than expected. Danielle says Roberta has been dealing with a lot. In the past year, she got sick with COVID and she is dealing with her older mom who has health issues as well. And Roberta also didn't have good internet or cell service, so the communication changed dramatically. Garrick knows Roberta means well and that she loves them, but sometimes it's a challenge with not knowing what's going on. Danielle says they don't even know or understand what living a plural lifestyle is like yet. Danielle says Roberta is Garrick's wife and she is committed, but she isn't here yet and things didn't work out with Leah with still trying to get Roberta to the U.S. Danielle isn't sure fully that Roberta understands the severity of the timeline. Roberta doesn't have much longer till her visa expires. Garrick says for him, he feels you've got to move forward in faith, that it's going to work out. Otherwise, you might just give up right now. Danielle says there is a lot going on right now. She looks on the verge of tears and she asks the producer to give her a minute. Next up are the Davis family, and they are on their weekend staycation with Danielle. The purpose of the trip is for them all to live in the same household to see how it goes. Nick interjects it's to see how long it takes for them to get on each other's nerves. April suggests to Danielle that they play games to get to know each other, where they say something that they've never done, and if the other person has done it, they take a drink. I used to play this game a lot and it's called Never Have I Ever. Nick asks if anyone has faked an orgasm and there is a part of Danielle that's reluctant to answer that. She drinks and Nick apparently has faked orgasms too. Wouldn't the woman know? It's pretty obvious, especially for a man, if they've orgasmed or not. Nick asks Danielle if she has ever been close to getting married and Danielle has never had a relationship that was even close to that point. 
Nick asks Danielle how her last relationship ended. And Danielle says she didn't want to be with the guy anymore. She found someone else, so she just left the guy. April says the reveal that Danielle might be the type to run away if things get serious was something they didn't know before, so they have to keep it in mind. So going forward, as things get more serious with her, they're aware of it. When Jennifer suggests she has never been jealous, April admits she dealt with jealousy, getting used to going from a monogamous relationship to polygamy. She gets jealous, and she says it's easy to get jealous. There were times when she and Nick were first dating, Jen, and Nick was excited about someone new, and April wondered if Nick still gets excited about her, or if Nick was still excited about being together with her. Nick did a great job of letting April know they still have that spark, but it's not always easy figuring out how you're going to respond to it. Getting emotional and crying will happen, of course, April says, but it's about how you fix it. Nick says there are times when he has to address jealousy too, because there will be times when the women are together and he is not there and he feels like he wasn't included or invited or like he's missing out. And there are times he has to walk himself back from feeling like he's not involved. Jenny gets jealous too. She says April is alpha. She can take over a room and people have different personalities. So Jennifer knows she doesn't need to be talking all the time, but sometimes she feels like less. She says being confident and comfortable with yourself switches that gear. Danielle says it was huge to hear about April and Jennifer's different experiences with jealousy and how they worked through it because this is her first plural relationship. Nick is tired. He wants to go to bed. He wants to know what the sleeping arrangements are for that night. And he suggests that they can all squeeze into the little bed to see what it would be like. Back to Sidian and Ariel, he says it feels natural and great and it's easy to make conversation with Ariel. Sidian and Ariel FaceTime with Tasha. Sidian loves that Tasha and Ariel were good friends first before Sidian even met her. Ariel used to work with Tasha and they clicked and they became fast friends. Ariel has never been in a polygamous relationship. She thought it would be weird, but it didn't feel weird because of her strong relationship with Tasha. Ariel decided to sleep over at Sidian's room and Sidian is very attracted to Ariel and he feels chemistry, but he isn't sure how Ariel feels. So he wants to talk to her about that. They are laying in bed, holding hands, and Sidian asks Ariel if he can kiss her and he starts kind of going in for a kiss and she hesitates and says she didn't know he meant right now and she suggests he should wait for a romantic moment at the sunset Next up are the Davises. Danielle agreed to sleep in the bed with April tonight since it's Nick's night with Jennifer. Jennifer lets Nick know if he gets up during the night, that's okay, she'll be asleep. And Nick tells her he is going to make sure she's sleeping, as if he's going to tire her out with sex. Nick says it would be hard to satisfy his sex drive in a monogamous relationship. He says it's a lot of pressure to put on one person and one person can only take so much. Nick is disgusting. Nick isn't attractive at all. He looks like the Walmart version of Dave Chappelle. He doesn't seem smart or funny, and looks aren't everything, but he acts like he is God's gift to women. Everything is about serving and satisfying him and his sex drive, his lifestyle, how the women work, and he sits on his ass, acting like his intelligence is so advanced that he's beyond work. This guy has a huge ego and narcissistic tendencies, in my opinion, and he's incredibly selfish. Everything is about him and satisfying him. He also said earlier in the episode that he almost worked at the strip club. I highly doubt that any women or even other men would get turned on seeing that guy without clothes on. It's nauseating. I don't think gay men would be into him, and I don't think too many straight men would be up at that strip club throwing dollar bills in his G-string. I think they'd be vomiting in their mouths. April and Jennifer like to do matching PJs, so they got matching PJs to include Danielle, too. Danielle liked the PJs and feeling included. She thought it was sweet. Nick thinks it's adorable, and he kisses Danielle, and then he kisses April, and then he kisses Jen as they all stand in a row in matching PJs. In confessional, Danielle says 
she gets jealous and she isn't used to sharing her time or affection with other women. At first, it made her feel bad and she wondered why she doesn't get all the kisses herself initially. Danielle says, at first it was weird to say, the man that you were just kissing is kissing another woman and then potentially kissing another woman after that. It's not necessarily something one would be comfortable with. Then she has to sit back and realize that this is all a part of the lifestyle. Danielle says if she is not willing and okay to accept that other women will get the same level of affection and love that she will, she wonders if this is something that will work out for her. Next up are the Foley's. Steve tells Brenda he doesn't know where today came from. He says the conversation has always been had many times about him and his lifestyle and about what their plan is. After his first wife ended their relationship, it was very emotional. So Steve and Brenda took time off from seeking potential sister wives. But from the beginning, he and Brenda knew what type of relationship they wanted. He says if they don't add a sister wife now, then when? Steve thinks they will regret not living polygamy. No, this is about Steve's dick and Steve wanting access to lots of cake without losing Brenda completely. He says they made the conscious effort about dating again, so they, or maybe it's just he, has no regrets. Steve doesn't understand. Jaden's saying if he pursues this, she just won't see him or visit. Brenda knows it's hard for Steve. Steve is super sensitive and emotional about his kids. So Brenda says when Jaden said she would no longer see her dad, she knows it hurts Steve tremendously. And it hurts Brenda too for Steve. Brenda wonders what they should do if they should like maybe not talk to the kids anymore regarding this or maybe should they still involve them. Brenda didn't want to say anything else after Jaden's responses because she knew it would ignite the situation further. Steve says there was a rough patch after Jaden's mom left and he stayed with Brenda because Jaden viewed Brenda as one of the primary reasons why the marriage between her parents ended. Steve says it wasn't true, and he keeps thinking at some point things will come around. But apparently, it doesn't matter what Steve does with his life. It doesn't matter that for the last five years, they haven't been searching for anybody. He is still seen as an evil person. Listen, Steve isn't a victim of his daughter who is just portraying him as evil. Instead of Steve taking accountability for not being the best father and husband and for being selfish and not prioritizing the right things, he wants to play victim and deflect and say, no matter what I do, no one accepts me. They think I'm evil. I think Steve's daughter wants to feel like she is his priority and like she matters. And I think she knows Steve is selfish and has messed up priorities and she doesn't like his lifestyle or agree with it. And there is nothing wrong with her saying she doesn't want to see him if he wants to see her and have a genuine relationship instead of deflecting and complaining he's the bad guy no matter what he does, he needs to show up and prioritize his kids over what he wants for himself and this lifestyle. This lifestyle is about Steve having a midlife crisis in my opinion. He was probably less attracted to Brenda who was once the hot new thing and he acts based on his lust. So he wants a new wife to bring on for selfish reasons because he likes cake. If Steve loved Brenda enough on a deep level beyond just lust, he wouldn't be out doing this if he wasn't so selfish. He's incredibly selfish and he cares about his own lust and his own needs more than the people around him. And I think his daughter knows what's up and she probably doesn't appreciate the way Steve treated her mom. Steve says at this point they are in a difficult situation. Jaden isn't being understanding of Steve's lifestyle. Brenda's relationship with April is not the best. Brenda says with April and Jaden, it does get hurtful because she tries. And here she starts crying and she says, with Jaden, she knows there is hurt and everything Brenda does to try and heal it doesn't change Jaden's mind. And it's the same with April. Brenda feels like she welcomed April into her home and into her relationship with her husband. And all she is asking for is to communicate with her and make her feel like she matters. Not that she is just no one in the relationship. Steve wonders where the situation with Jaden puts them and what they should do.
Brenda suggests keeping the kids more involved and eventually, after hearing so much about it, they will just feel it's not as big a deal as they thought it was and they will find it's not this horrible thing. I really don't think that's gonna be the case. The producer asks Steve if he wants to add anything and Steve says he doesn't wanna say anything on camera that he may regret. Next up are Sidian and Ariel Sidian set up a romantic dinner at sunset with an ocean backdrop. Sidian and Ariel had their first kiss at the sunset. Ariel says it felt amazing. She has never been on a real date like this one before on the beach with the sunset, so it makes everything extra romantic for her. Sidian asks Ariel what it means for her that for them, so far, it's not awkward or uncomfortable. And Ariel says it's a good sign that everything flows naturally. Sidian has been watching a lot of videos about Filipino culture and he says Filipino women enjoy more traditional gender roles. So the man is typically the breadwinner and the women focus on the kids and the family. Ariel says that's true for most Filipino women but not for her because she prefers to be independent. For Ariel it's fulfilling to know that she can take care of herself and that she can manage with or without a man in her life. Sidian loves that and it's something he looks for in a partner. Tasha and Sidian both like to be independent too and they each have their independence, but they partner up and they do things together better than they could have ever done alone. He says with Ariel, it would be the same and he would want her to succeed. Ariel says for Sidian to come to the Philippines to see her life and see her culture and to meet her, it makes her appreciate Sidian more. She can see Sidian is very open-minded. Sidian asks how Ariel would feel living in a house with his kids. Ariel is nervous about it. She wonders if Sidian's kids will like her or not, but she thinks she's great with kids and she can get along with them. Sidian brings up that one of his kids is transgender, and that is why they moved out of Boise to find a more supportive culture for his family and Sidian wants to know where Ariel stands on it or if it's problematic for her. Ariel sees nothing wrong with it. She supports it as long as Sidian's children are happy. Ariel says it's a good date. It's romantic. She loves the food and having Sidian around. Sidian thinks both he and Ariel are sexually attracted to each other and there is definitely a potential for that happening tonight. Next time on Seeking Sister Wife, Nick is curious to know how Danielle feels about April and Jennifer being legally married to each other. He wants to make sure Danielle understands that they wouldn't be legally married, and that's a little scary to Danielle. Ariel asks Sidian to be honest right now with how things are going, and Sidian says, pretty awkward. Ariel thinks it's awkward too if she's being completely honest. I wonder what happened. Danielle says when she and Roberta take turns with Garrick, that will be their room upstairs. She is showing her mom the new house and there are seven bedrooms. It's a lot to clean. Garrick is pointing out a safe play area for a baby in the house to Danielle's dad and Danielle suggests that you could fit two babies in there. Garrick wonders if he will have twins. Marcus asks India and Taryn, how they feel about his date with Janae tomorrow. So I guess Marcus has already moved on from Bina. He's now dating Janae. So tomorrow night he has a date with Janae. One thing Marcus knows about her that he's excited about is that they are gonna talk all night. Karen asks why Marcus is saying all night. And India tells Marcus he has a curfew. And Marcus says he's a grown man. He's not having it. That does it for this episode. I want to know why Sidian and Ariel feel so awkward. Was the sex bad? Could Sidian not get it up? I wonder. So far, that's all I can consider, but there could be a million other possibilities we'll have to see next week. To my YouTube viewers, please like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I'll try my best to be back this week for the next episode of my Sister Wives Rewatch, Season 2, Episode 11, sister wives in the city of sin depending on my schedule if not definitely next week along with the second half of chapter six on janelle for becoming sister wives book club and also look out next week for the newest episode of seeking sister wife thanks so much for listening bye